Thursday service. We'll be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, starting from verse 6. Love does not rejoice in injustice, but it rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, it believes all things, it hopes all things, and it endures all things. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will pass away. Where there are tongues, they will cease. Where there is knowledge, it shall pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is partial will pass away. Amen. 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 Father God, we ask that we love you and your kingdom with the perfect love that you has, have set before us, that we love as Messiah loved, that we follow you as Messiah followed you. We praise you and we honor you this morning, Father God, in Yeshua's most holy name. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Good Shabbos. What to expect today? We read the Torah scroll, the first five books of the Holy Scriptures, over one full year, each week having its own reading. We are a multilingual congregation using English, Hebrew, and Spanish. The uh, prayers and blessings are led by our cantoral team, and many parts of them are interactive, which means we, uh, we're all worshiping together. And traditional greetings are Shabbat Shalom or Good Shabbos, which means may you have a peaceful Sabbath. <clears throat> and blowing of the shofar. It's a call to assembly and worship. Please stand if possible as those trained with the shofar come forward. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. All the tribes of the land will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with tremendous power and glory. He will send out his angels with a great shofar, and they will gather his chosen people from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Amen. Amen. Bless you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to hear the call of the shofar. Amen. Amen. Turned everyone to his own way, or iniquities were laid upon a king. The 
the sins of the world, and his burden to bear. He rose from the dead and opened the way to life everlasting. Praise his name. We are in him. His spirit empowers. New life is ours with joy and peace. Bless the new Lord of God, who has given us the Messiah, Yeshua, our King. We bless the new Messiah. We are the Torah of the Elohim of the Torah, the Shernatan of the Lord of the Torah, the Yeshua of the Messiah, Yeshua. Amen. We bless the new Lord of God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation. In the Messiah of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Uh, Maya, Maya, hey, hi, you Maya, hey, hi, you
the master of all, to ascribe greatness to the author of creation. For he made us unlike the nations of the lands, and has not placed us like the families of the earth. He has not made our portion like theirs, and our lot like all their multitudes. And we bend the knee and bow, and acknowledge our thanks before the King over kings, the Holy One. Blessed be he. He stretches out heaven and establishes earth's foundation. And the seat of his glory is in the heavens above, and the presence of his power is in the most exalted heights. He is our God, there is none other. True is our King, there is nothing beside him, as it is written in his Torah. And you shall know this day and take to heart that the Lord, he is God, and the heavens above and on the earth below there is none other. And it is said, the Lord shall be king over all the world. On that day the Lord will be one, and his being one. Amen. 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 Um, well, as we continue, please join me for the Adonai, um, which reads, Master of the Universe. <laughs> Adonai, Hey! 
that this thou shalt keep the Shabbat, observing it throughout their generations with everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in the sixth day the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. From Shabbat Exodus 31, 16. <coughs> You did not give it, O Lord our God, to the nations of the lands, nor did you make it the inheritance our king of the worshippers of graven idols. For to Israel your people have you given it in love, to the seed of Yaakov, whom you have chosen. The people that sanctified the seventh, they will all be satisfied and delighted from your goodness. And the seventh, you found favor in it and sanctified it. Most coveted of days, you called it a remembrance of the act of creation. Our God and the God of our fathers, may you be pleased with our rest. Sanctify us with your commandments and grant our share in your flaw. Satisfy us from your goodness and gladden us with your salvation, and purify our hearts to serve you sincerely. O Lord our God, with love and favor, grant us your holy Shabbat as a heritage, and may Israel and the sanctifiers of your name rest on it. Blessed are you, O Lord, who sanctifies the Shabbat. Amen. 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 And we thank you for showing respect to the word of God while the Torah is brought out by facing this world during the procession, standing for the Torah reading, and participating in the service. <coughs> <laughs> there is none like you, O Lord, among the gods that are worshipped, and there are no deeds like yours. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. Source of mercy, let your goodness be a blessing to Sion, let Jerusalem be your good, and you alone to be trusted, the sovereign God, high and exalted, Lord of all the worlds. And it came to pass when the ark went forth, Moshe would say, Rise up, Lord, and scatter your enemies, and may those who hate you run from you. Torah will go forth out of Sion and the Lord's work in Jerusalem. Blessed is he who in his holiness gave Torah to his people Israel. <coughs> <laughs> Oh, 
העולם, אשר בקרבנו מכל הימים, ונתן לנו את תורתו. ברוך אתה אדוני, נותן התורה. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from among all people and given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, who has given us his Torah. Um, before I begin, um, we are implementing a new tradition. Um, as the reader of the Torah grasps the uh, Torah scroll, um, they will say, A tree of life to all who grasp her. And the congregation will repeat it, and then the Torah reader will say it one more time. So, <clears throat> a tree of life to all who grasp her. A tree of life to all who grasp her. A tree of life to all who grasp her. A tree of life to all who grasp her. Ve'ata tetzave et b'nei Yisrael ve'itchu ve'itchu alit she'men ve'ata This week's Torah portion is uh, Tetzaveh. That was the first uh, verse of Tetzaveh, which is Exodus 27, verse 20. Um, so I'll read that back to you in the Hebrew. I mean, in the English. <clears throat> also, you are to command B'nai Israel that they are to bring to you pure olive oil beaten for the light to cause a lamp to burn continually. And I'll be reading today... Um, the Shabbat portion, which is Shemot chapter 30, verses 1 through 10. I'm um, also going to read uh, 28, 9 through 30. But I'm going to go ahead and read the Shabbat uh, portion first. <clears throat> you are to make an altar, an altar of acacia wood for burning incense. It is to be square, one cubit in length, one cubit wide, and two cubits high. The horns must be of one piece with it. You are to overlay it with pure gold on top, all around the sides and over the horns. Also, you are to make a crown of gold for it all around. Make two golden rings for it under the crown on the two sides, and they will be holders for poles to carry it. Make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. You are to set it in front of the curtain that is in front of the Ark of the Testimony, in front of the atonement cover that is over the testimony where I will meet with you. Aharon must burn sweet spices of incense there every morning. When he attends to the lamps, he is to burn it. Also, when Aharon keeps the lamp lit at dusk, he must burn it. There must be incense continually before Adonai throughout your generations. You must not offer up an unauthorized incense on it, nor should any burnt offering or grain offering be there, nor should you pour any drink offering there. Aharon is to make atonement upon the horns once a year, with the blood of the sin offering throughout your generations, it is most holy to Adonai. Amen. <clears throat> you are to take two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of B'nai Israel. Six of their names on one stone and, on the, and the names of the remaining six on the other stone, in order of their birth. With the work of the gem cutter engraving a seal, etch the two stones in order of the names of B'nai Israel, 
make them enclosed in settings of gold, fasten the two stones upon the shoulder pieces of the ephod, to be memorial stones for B'nai Israel. So Aharon is to bear their names before Adonai on his two shoulders as a reminder. Fashion, filigree, settings of gold, along with two chains of pure gold, of braided work. And you will attach the chains to the filigree settings. Make a breastplate of judgment, the work of a skillful craftsman. You are to make it like the design of the ephod of gold, blue, purple, scarlet, and finely twisted linen. It is to be square and doubled over a span in length and a span in width. Set within it four rows of jewels, a row of ruby, topaz, and emerald for the first row, a turquoise and sapphire and a diamond for the second row, a jacinth and a gate and an amethyst for the third, and a beryl and onyx and a jasper for the fourth row. They are to be enclosed in the gold settings. The stones are to be engraved in order of the names of B'nai Israel, 12 according to their names, like the etching of a signet seal, one corresponding to each name of the 12 tribes. Also, you are to make upon the breastplate braided chains of reef work from pure gold. Forge on the breastplate two rings of gold and fasten the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate. Then attach the two reef chains of gold on the two rings at the end of the breastplate. The other two ends of the chain you are to place on the two settings and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod in front. So you are to make two rings of gold and put them on the two ends of the breastplate on the edge of it that is, that is toward the inner side of the ephod. Also make two gold rings and place them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod underneath in the front, close to where it is joined, above the artfully woven band of the ephod. Then they will bind the breastplate by its rings to the rings of the ephod with the blue thread, so that it may be on the skillfully woven band of the ephod, and so that the breastplate will not come loose from it. Aharon will bear the names of B'nai Israel in the breastplate of judgment on his heart. Whenever he enters the holy place as a continual memorial before Adonai. <clears throat> also put the Arim and the Thumim within the breastplate of judgment, so that they will be on Aharon's heart when he goes in before Adonai. Aharon will bear the judgment of B'nai Israel on his heart before Adonai continually. <clears throat> Amen. 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 <clears throat> In this week's Parsha, we see Aharon being prepared and close for his position as Kohen Gadol. While this is a tremendous honor, no other position in all of Israel bears so much responsibility. Aharon is responsible for maintaining a strict standard of living and standing in the gap for everyone under his authority that has taken up a covenant with Hashem. And Hashem who has a purpose for all things said and done, gives Moshe and Aharon precise instructions on the Kohen Gadol's garments and fills it with reminders of the 12 tribes. And what this speaks to me is, in the midst of serving, in the midst of being exhausted, in the midst of feeling like you're doing the right thing but seeing no results, in the midst of bearing the responsibility of the spiritual condition of those under your authority, as a parent or husband, remember that in all things that we do is for the benefit of our brothers and sisters. Unified in obedience and unified in the goal placed over our kahila can begin to activate power and blessings that are already ours, but not given until Hashem can trust us with precious things. Through knowing just how much we can all gain individually and collectively, by committing ourselves to the service of our families and brothers, and remembering that when the evil inclination presents itself to each one of us, that what we partake of is brought forth in us, to our children and our brothers. Mm. We've all been called to be priests and bear the responsibility of each other. The more dedicated and consistent we are individually in keeping a life worthy of our calling, and remembering to pray and encourage and be a handout to each other, the more healing and order will be brought into our lives and our kahila. Mm. And once this begins, and things are put into order among us, and our cup begins to overflow, we can pour it out into the world and make a path straight for the Messiah to come. We don't have to fight alone. 
This is the reason Hashem has formed this kehila to bring healing to each other, to be a priest over each other, to encourage each other to put away the sin and curses and take up the mitzvot, to speak life and goodness into each other's lives and families. May Hashem in His great mercy cause us to remember the responsibility we hold and who we do this for when we are in the seasons that seem like valleys. Mm. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu Torah emet, v'chayi olam nata betokheinu. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu Torah, Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us a Torah of truth and planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Amen. As we lift up the Torah for all to see what was just proclaimed, we point to the scroll with our little fingers. This demonstrates that we are little in the presence of Hashem, and His word is what we submit to.
by cubits, a cubit being a normal cubit plus a, a handbreadth. Its gutters will be a cubit deep and a cubit wide. Its rims will be one span surrounding the edge. This will be the base of the altar. From the base on the ground to the lower ledge will be two cubits and the width one cubit. From the smaller ledge to the larger ledge will be four cubits and the width a cubit. The altar hearth will be four cubits high. Four horns will project upward from the heart. The heart will be the 12 cubits long with 12 wide with four side squares. The ledge will be 14 cubits long and 14 wide with four side squares. The border surrounding it all be half a cubit and its bottom will be a cubit all around. Its step, steps will face east. Then he said to me, Son of man, thus is Adonai Elohim. These are the statues for the altar on the day when they were constructed in order to offer burnt offerings on it and to sprinkle blood on it. Give a young bull for a sin offering to the Levitical Kohanim, who are from the offsprings of Sadok, who come near to me, minister to me. It is the declaration of Adonai. You are to take some of its blood and put it on its four horns and on the four corners of the ledge and on the border around it. So you will purify it and make atonement for it. Take the bull of the sin offering and burn it in the appointed place of the house outside the sanctuaries. On the second day, offer a male goat without blemish as a sin offering. They will purify the altar as they purified it with the bull. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us Messiah Yeshua and the commandments of the renewed covenant. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the renewed covenant. Today's reading is going to be from Hebrews uh, chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. Hebrews 13, verse 10. We have an altar from which those serving in the tabernacle have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holies by the Kohen Gadol has an offering for sin, are burned outside the camp. Therefore, to make the people holy through his own blood, Yeshua also suffered outside the gate. So let us go to him outside the camp, bearing his disgrace. 
For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the one that is to come. Through Yeshua, then, let us continually offer up to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips giving thanks to his name. Do not neglect doing good and sharing, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your soul as one who, as ones who must give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no benefit to you. Amen. Barukata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Natalanu Hadubar Ta'amet Ve'chaye Olam Natan Betahim. Barukata Adonai, Notein Ha'bri Ha'ishat. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the word of truth and has planted life everlasting in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the reading of the covenant. Have you joined me for the Esraim? That's Shabbat Shuvah, inscribe us for life, blessing, peace, and prosperity, remembering all of your people, Israel, for life and peace. Blessed are you, Adonai, source of peace. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable before you, Adonai, my rock and my redeemer. Tehillim, Psalms 1915. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Good job.
Uh, those of you who are watching at home, the, the uh, website. Yes, the, web, the link will be placed in the comment section below. That being said, let's go get right into today's lesson. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Alright. So this week's first and foremost Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters, Mishpacha, family, tribal member. Shabbat Shalom to each and every one of you. Good job. This week's Torah portion is titled Tetzah Veh, which is you shall... What was it? Command. Command. You shall command. That's pretty... pretty. So it, this week's Torah portion, it opens with the command with, regarding the oil and the lighting of the Torah. Amen? Amen. And then it goes into all the details from the lamb to the sacrifice to the, the breastplate. And Elohim, he ordains our daily worship service. The day starts with the sacrifice of a lamb. The day ends with the sacrifice of a lamb. It may sound like there's a whole bunch of lambs being sacrificed, but in reality it's only two. Two, sacri two lambs are sacrificed every single day. One in the morning and one in the evening. Yeshua was nailed to the execution stage early in the day. And he perished when the sun was covered, when the day ended. Amen? Amen. Is it by coincidence that these things seem similar? No. Every day the, the priests offer two males. Two males. And we went over this before, what the lamb is symbolic of. Somebody who just goes along with anything. Amen? Amen. Of course, that's nobody here, right? Very few people here just go along with anything. Uh, but let's go further on. Every single one of the stones within the breastplate is inscribed with what? Who read this portion today? What were they inscribed with? On the, the names, breastplate? The names of the tribes. The names of the tribes. What's symbolic about that? If you go to Isaiah 56, he says, I will inscribe your name within the house of my kingdom forever. Which means you and your life will carry on within the kingdom of God forever. Amen? Amen. When does life cease to exist truly? Is it here? Or is it beyond here? Beyond here. Everybody agrees to that or no? Yes. It's only on your mother. Okay? It's only on your mother. All right. Is that security keeping on this one? <laughs> So in that, we can look at it with a completely different point of view. Because God has ascribed your name before He even created you, He has already purposed you for greatness. He has already destined you for something significant. But we have to rise up to that occasion, just like each of the twelve tribes had a choice of partaking in paganism with the nations that they passed along the way, or they could have been the, the witness to those nations that they passed along the way. How many people do we pass on a daily basis that we don't bother to give a second thought to? And yet, all along the way, Yeshua says you're supposed to share the good news with every living creature. Moses said, Present the truth to all the 70 nations of the land. It's the same commission. We are to share the truth 
everywhere that we go, on the highways and the byways. If it's not, if anything, but to share the love of God with somebody is something significant. Your life was in fact destined, made, created for a purpose, for a godly purpose, for a goodly purpose. Whether you fulfill that or not is all dependent on how closely you walk with this. How, how closely you carry the mitzvahot, the instructions of God. Do we just read the, the scripture or do we put it into practice? Those are choices you'll have to make and along the journey you'll either begin to bear good fruit or not. Or not good fruit. So each life is inscribed with the potential for greatness. But instead we often strive for that which is easiest, right? What's more convenient? The other night, Rubitsa and I, we were, we were starving. We had been out doing ministry all, all day long. We didn't bother to stop and do eat anything. So we were terribly hungry. Now we could have easily, hey, let's go to, let's go to Jack and the Whoever's and get something there. But instead we took the time, we made some food and, and prepared it properly and we cooked it, we ate it, we enjoyed it, mostly. Um, <laughs> But it was, it was a drastic difference, right? And just going and eating something that's only going to fulfill you for a moment, and then a moment later you're starving again. Or making something that sustains you and nourishes you, taking the time to do it correctly, right? I love when we get new brothers and sisters at the Kahila because they right away want to get into all the obscured books, right? Take your time. Take your time. Because you may have some instant gratification in some of these secondary practices and books, but it's not going to sustain you. That's right. the, these secondary books are wonderful as additives to this. But they don't replace this. They don't overrule or override this. This is the foundation. This is why we sing as sister wants to start the new tradition. This is why we say it's Chaim, because this is it. Right? Anything else is additional fruit you're putting on it. Take it slow and steady. Amen. You will get there, but you have to not neglect the striving towards the righteousness. And that isn't going to be the easiest thing for you to do. The easiest thing would be for you to just go along like the world, lie, steep, cheat, kill, uh, take advantage of, uh, hustle people, and all these other sort of behaviors. Right? Those are the easier things. But they have no eternal fruit. Not anything that will sustain you, your household, your family. They won't bring about healing. They won't bring about spiritual awareness. But let me go on. So being a son of God comes with responsibility. Yes, salvation is free. But now you're responsible once you accept it. In 1 Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 2, Therefore rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit. Cast out all hypocrisy, all envy, all slander. Notice all the majority of those all have to do with this. They all have to do with this, right? What we say and how we say it matters. If you're a child of God, you'll have this, reflect that, right? Yeah. Like newborn babies, craves pure spiritual milk, so that 
by it you may grow up in your salvation. Yes, that's right. You can't just stay a child forever in the kingdom. You have to grow into a responsible servant. Let me go on. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good, amen. Amen. As you come to him, the living stone rejected by humans, but chosen by God, precious to him. If you don't know by now that you are in fact precious to God, you are missing the whole message of this book. You are valued by the creator of everything. Rise up to that potential. Let me continue on. Verse 5. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house, to a royal holy priesthood. Offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through the Messiah. What are some of those spiritual issues we have to sacrifice? Where are they? Nobody? Oh, there you go. Quiet. <laughs> Where's any, anybody? Just a guess. It's fine. Fear. Huh? Fear. Yeah. <clears throat> Zeli just sang the blessing, right? No fear, right? I shall not fear because I trust in the Lord. There's something else we have to sacrifice. No? Disobedience. <clears throat> huh. That would be a thing, huh? That would be a thing. Your heart. Yeah. Off from your heart, right? Off from your flesh. Stop acting so carnal. You're a child of God. Let me go on. So the Urim and, and Tumim, they were, they were placed just behind the breastplate, right? And I say when the priest would ask Hashem a question, and they would pray and meditate on it. And the, 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 the two stones would glow. And they would cause the, the stones of the breastplate to glow. For example, if they, wanted, if they were about to go into war against the Amalekites, they would ask Hashem, who should lead? And Judah would start to glow. Followed by the other tribes who would fall in line after him. And so on. Every time the priest had a significant question, they needed to ask Hashem. They would seek him in prayer and and with due diligence. They would sit there and pray for you know till he answered. They wouldn't just pray and then go about their day and okay everything's fine because they knew that God answers in His time. Do we know that God answers in His time? That's right. Or do we expect him to answer us when we want? Okay. Lord, I need this answer now. <laughs> oh, first thing he's going to teach you is patience at that point. <laughs> <laughs> we are on his time, he is not on ours. We are going to be joining him in eternity. So, Wait on him. Be faithful in that waiting. There's plenty of work in the kingdom for you to set your mind on so you don't have to get frustrated with it. Set your heart to doing the things of God. And he will answer you in his time. Be patient. Let me continue on. So the Urim and, and Tumim, they, what do they represent? What they have on them is two stones that are behind the breastplate that, that cause the rest of it to glow. What do they have on them? They have the four letter name of God. The Yud He and the Yud He God He. Oh, they're all on one? No, it's two, right? You okay? Okay. Right? But 
what do those represent? Anyone? What do, what, do the, what do the two stones represent? Is it just pretty stones that God wanted in there? Or do they have meaning and purpose? Meaning and purpose. So, to me, it, repre it represents or. What is or? Light. Light? Light of what? The sun? Light of Donna. Hashem, right? And the other, the Tom, means perfect. So those together meant perfect light. Or the only perfect light. Amen? So it takes God's holy, perfect light to truly illuminate our lives. We have to embrace His Word. To have our lives perfectly illuminated. God commands Moshe to call upon talented artisans to create a lot of the details within the Mishkan and even the clothing for the priests. And you shall make holy garments for your brother Aharon for honor and glory, and you shall speak to all the wise-hearted whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom. And they shall make Aharon's garments to sac sanctify him, so that he may serve me as a Kohen. And they shall take gold, blue, purple, crimson. So the question is asked, but why, why, did, why did Moshe have artists? And most certainly, why did he have those same artists who created these, these details for the tabernacle? Why did he have them go take collections for these same things? Couldn't anybody have went and took up collections? You know, like Shmueli, the guy who opens the door at, at, at the tabernacle. Hey, welcome. Can they have had him just go take up collection for the the details of the clothing and, and the tabernacle? Why do they have the same artist who would build them go take up offerings? Because they were the appointed ones. They were the appointed ones, right? Then what happens if you have just anybody go do just anything? What happens? A mess. A mess? Mm -hmm. Yeah? You won't have order, that's for sure. Right. Because for somebody who isn't, say, a, a metal craftsman, right? Mm -hmm. They're not going to know the quality that's necessary for the ingredients to create this, right? Right. They're not going to have the, the, the care the investment of this is my work. Who I and I set my work before the king, before the king of kings. Mm -hmm. And it has to be that way with us. God has given each of us skills and giftings, but we have to do them with the utmost care and detail. Because this is your life's work. This is your life's work. Will it be a work that glorifies the kingdom because you did what you were designed to do faithfully? Let me continue on. So the people who have the skill within them, they will take care of that which God has placed them over or play, set them to do. They will take care, they will put compassion in it. 
it's, it's equivalent to somebody who goes up to you and they say that they know what you're going through, they know where you've been, and really they don't know you from Adam. It's not legitimate any of the words they say to you at that point. Your testimony has to be a personal and legitimate testimony. You can't fake your testimony. You can't make it up. You can't pretend it up. It is your life's work. It is that which shows what you've done or what you haven't done. Let's continue on. So understand, based on this simple verse, he has purposed and created you for specifics. And yes, as Sister Crystal had shared with, with other, with, well, with the sisters, she didn't share it with the brothers. But as, as you have your gifts, this doesn't mean you're not talented in other areas. This isn't what that means, right? But this is your primary purpose. The other things you're doing, and it's blessing unto the kingdom. But fulfill your primary purpose. And you'll only know that by reading this. Not just reading it, but by applying it. Let me continue on. So the Torah instructs that Aharon was to kindle the menorah. But the oil was passed to Moses first. Before it went to Aaron, for Aaron to fill up the, the, each of the branches, first it was taken to Moses. Why? Why is the oil taken to Moses first? Why is it taken? Why, why, is, why is it taken to him first? No? Okay. Okay, we'll move on. When y'all get the answer, get back with me, okay? Uh, so the oil itself represents our spiritual potential. Okay? It, how, how do we get pure oil? How does that happen? Somebody read it earlier. How does that happen? Press in olive oil. Are you talking olive oil? Yeah. They have to what to it? Squeeze. Press. It has to be pressed, right? Just like a little press? Throw a little bit of oil. What do you think, Elder? How, 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 how do they get that oil out of them olives? It has to be pressed on the olive. Is it just like a little pinch? No. No? Not a pinch? Huh? It's not a pinch. I don't know what they mean, but they have to be a hard thing. They crush it, right? Yeah. They crush it. You know, for some of your gifts to fully come to fruition, come to the forefront of who you are, for your gifts, for your calling, for who you are to actually come out of the shell that is you. God will press you. Understand, He has no problem pressing anyone here or anyone on the internet. He has no issue pressing it. Because His desire is that you should serve Him in a pure manner. And that means there will be a little bit of crushing in your life. Every person possesses within their soul an amazing amount of potential. But if you are not willing to endure and stay consistent, that potential will not be realized. Not to where you had hoped. Let me continue on. But it's not enough to possess. 
their potential, is it? Yeah. Brother, what happens if we only possess potential? Faith without yeah. works is dead. Faith without works is dead. Yeah, that's good. But, and it doesn't get there, right? It's like the guy who sings a song, I've got high hopes. And I'm sure half of you aren't old enough to remember that song. That's okay. It's all right. <laughs> I know you are, all right? That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> But, you know, the kid will go on and on singing about, I've got high hopes, high in the sky hopes. But he, he never got there. Throughout the song, he never gets there. <laughs> should, should have got to work. I'm saying, right? So I, I've said this in years past, and I'll say it again. My grandfather used to say you can have excuses or results, but you can't have both. You cannot have both. So if you want to further your walk and your relationship with the King, be committed. Set your hand to doing the work of the Kingdom. Be committed to whatever kahila or assembly you attend. Work it diligently, as if you are working a literal field, because you literally are. When people establish a relationship with, with the forefathers, when they establish a connection with those holy people who went before us, we're following in an order that has been, and that will continue to be, because it's an order that God has set up. He displays it over and over again through the generations. What did he say in Exodus 3 and verse 6? He says, I am, the, I am the God of your fathers. I am the God. And he sets the word right here. I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. And I am the God of Jacob. Over and over again, he sets that same order. Does Yeshua come and, and just do away with the order of God? Nope. No. No, he actually says, I haven't, don't think that I've come to abolish the law. But I have come to confirm it, to proof it. Amen? Amen? He too fell in that same order of God. Though some people they see it, some people don't want to see it. Right? Because it's easier to make something up and go along with that than get your life in order. I mean, if I can still behave like a heathen and, and go to go to assembly on, on the weekends, and the leaders say it's good, then I'm good. <laughs> nope. Uh -uh. Doesn't work like that. At this, Moses hid his face, and he was afraid to look at God. Godliness became a real factor in their lives because of the work done by those who have went before them, by the Abraham, the Isaac, the Jacob, the Moshe, and so on. Honor the work that people have done before you. So this very day I still quote stuff from either Cohen or, or Brother Chip. And I honor the work that they did before me. So being connected with our forefathers, being connected with, with the root that is eternal, opens up compassion and understanding for those who are still stuck competing with the Joneses. Let me continue on. In Luke 5 and 13, Yeshua reached out his hand and touched him. And he said, I am willing. 
He said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Yeshua went on to say, do not tell anyone that I have done this for you. But go immediately and show yourself to the priest and present the offering that is prescribed for this issue. What was the man's issue that he healed in that scene? He had uh, leprosy or something like that. Okay. Yes and no. Leprosy in a biblical context is, is the effect of the shofara, evil speech, gossip, slander, and malicious speaking. All right. So you can't walk around all day like if you're not blessed and speaking that same way. You have to speak as the son or daughter of God that you were created to be. The, the cursing every other word, the, the, the being argumentative, being a backbiter, these are all in that same category that will bring about a spiritual leprosy over your life. So we must get it out of our vocabulary to speak negative about anyone. And therefore, show honor to that sacrifice which was given so that you may enter the kingdom. He did not sacrifice his only begotten son so we could speak how we want, eat what we want, behave however. No. He did it because you owe sin and death a price. They're about to shut the lights off in your house. Start following Messiah so that way the eternal light doesn't go out. <clears throat> Let me continue on. In every generation, God raises up leaders whose lives will serve as beacons to inspire and to awaken other people. You notice what's not in that sentence? It doesn't rise up Jewish leaders or, or leaders in faith so that way they can come and criticize and, and, and ridicule each and every one and everything. Their lives are supposed to be the example. How many times do we find Yeshua criticizing the, the authority that's over him in his time? He didn't. Never. Once, right? He went into the Father's house and they were having a flea market in there. Mm -hmm. Well, that was him rebuking them. Yeah. It wasn't a critique, right? No, it was a rebuke. And he gives us, in Matthew 7, he gives us the prescription of what kind of man of God not to follow. Or what kind of man not to honor. Those who like to give the way long speeches and, and all this stuff, right? He gives us that prescription for those. Let me continue on. So there is there is a word within an Aramaic word within this Torah portion. Y'all say this with me, zafta. Zafta. And in the root of it means to bind together, right? So in other words, we as a kahila or we as a people of faith, we must bind together. But the thing that separates us from being bound together as as a family is the evil tongue. Right? Does that make sense? Yes. Mm. You know, uh, sister doesn't like the way sister did something, and so she's holding that against her, and so on. So we need to get rid of all this sort of behavior. That way God can finish the process of maturing us. The other, the other definition of 
Zatra, is that like the Corbin, for us to fully function correctly, we have to draw close to God. We have to draw close to His Word. Anyone who took an offering to the Mishkan, how could, did they just drop it in a mail slot? Scripture said they had to draw close and take their offering. So even before you bring your offering, first is draw close to God. Draw close to our Messiah. Draw close to His salvation. And in that, our lives will be illuminated. Let me continue on. So every morning and every evening a lamb was sacrificed. Every morning and every evening they were diligent to make sure that the menorah kept left, lit. How often should we go before the Lord? All the time. Huh? All the time. All the time. Always. Always, right? At the very least, every morning and every evening, mm -hmm. right? Just like those sacrifices that were going on every day in the old temple, every morning and every evening. And when do we keep the, the light of Hashem burning in us? Always. Always, right? It was supposed to go out when? Never. Not even on Sundays? No. no. Saturdays. It's supposed to go on Saturdays, no. right? No. We give the flame the day off. <laughs> Friday night. No? No. No. Never, right? And so that our passion for God should never go out. It should continue on eternally. Okay, and finally, in here we, we it brings up the the word of mitzvah, right? And sometimes we, we I do it. We translate when Paul says that we should occupy ourselves regularly with good deeds. Uh, it is it can be translated to mitzvah, but there is a difference between those two. A good deed isn't necessarily commanded. A mitzvah is commanded. And so the, there is a bit of a difference. Although doing good in itself for a good deed is a mitzvah. Okay? Does everybody follow along that, that circle there? Okay. From Proverbs, Solomon writes... The soul of a man is, a, is the candle of God. And for a mitzvah is a candle. If both are mitzvahs and the soul are candles, then perhaps in some sense the soul and a mitzvah are the same thing. In other words, as the spirit of truth goes forward and through our lives, our lives illuminate. But if the spirit of truth isn't going forth through you, then your life isn't illuminated. Right? No? In this week's Torah portion, he says, Bring the mitzvah ot into the souls of Israel, so that they may become a mitzvah ot. That you and I should be a blessing. That you and I should be figuratively His word. Amen? Amen. We see this when we say the blessing. Asher kirishanu. A mitzvotah. 
who has sanctified us through his commandments. commandments. And has made us a mitzvah, a blessing, an instruction. Who are we an instruction and a blessing to? Who are you a blessing to? My children and family. Okay. All right. So, in house. In house? And others. Okay. And others. All right. How about you? Who are you a blessing to? Um, everyone who knows me. Oh, that's a bold statement. <laughs> <laughs> Look, she's clapping for you, so it must be true. <laughs> All right, let's see. Mr. Phil, who are you a, a blessing to? Y'all. Oh, well, there you go. Yes, thank you. Thank you. But the concept is that we should be either a mentor, a student, a blessing, a help, right? Mm -hmm. A mitzvah, wherever we go, whatever we're doing. The beauty of us following in our faith is that as we set our heart and our mind to doing goodness, to doing mitzvahs, there isn't room for the other things in our life. Right? And incidentally, the more goodness we do, the more goodness grows in our lives. Right? Because people begin to see the example of goodness in you. They no longer see the person who is snarky, making... Uh, undertone comments about everyone and everything, but they see this person who's a blessing, and they themselves begin to be a blessing. So, a mitzvah begins, essentially, as an external thing, right? Like, when you do a kindness for somebody else, that's a good example of it. It starts as, as, it'll be fine. It starts as, a, as an external thing, right? Like, I, I carried my wife's Bible for her all day, right? But people that witness it, they see the kindness and goodness of it, and they begin to want, yeah, they want to do kindness and goodness for themselves. So as the act is performed, the Spirit of Truth, or the Rakh HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, reminds us that we can become what we do, right? So that is part of the purpose of our laws and our instructions, is that we become what we do. If I hang out in the club all week, every day, I become a part of that seen. That lifestyle, that understanding. If I hang out at the zoo every day, all day, I become part of that <laughs> environment. Right? So, as we occupy ourselves with goodness, doing goodness, we become part of that. Right? A met reminds us always that we can become what we do. Our actions seep into our essence. Just as we say that one can become a blessing, one can also become a mitzvah. The world will be better for the transforming effect of each person when all of us sets to doing good. When we're loyal to goodness, when we're loyal to being faithful. So, this week, as a Torah portion's title, you shall command. What will you command? Goodness and blessing? 
or consequences in ignorance? You decide. That be said, God bless you. Thank you for your time. Gather the children um, over up to the side. Uh, and if with a couple of the brothers can hold uh, Salif over um, our growing future there. <laughs> Guys, keep, keep them on the camera, okay? Let's go that way, Princess, okay? I moved it over this way some, so. Okay. All right. Please extend your hands towards the future leaders of our faith. May God make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. May the Lord protect and defend you. May he always shield you from shame. May you come to be in Israel a shining name. May you be like Ruth and like Esther. May you be 
up one. Um, and then we'll, right after the ironic benediction, we do have some announcements. We're so very grateful to the sisters who took the time and energy and, and had the patience and diligence to put together the itemized list for the holidays. We're super excited about that because that will help all of us accomplish it better. Okay? These are the words that Yeshua spoke over the Talmudim as he ascended into heaven. These are also the words that Moses instructed his brother Aaron to pronounce over the sons and the daughters of Israel. <laughs>